There are histories on pretty much everything in India, be it states, societies, cultures. So why is it that there are so few histories of the environment? It's literally the thing that surrounds us and keeps us alive. That's exactly what we explore in this interview with Thomas Crowley. Crowley is the author of Sage's latest offering, Fractured Forest Courtside City, and it's one of the first books to ever explore one of Delhi's most important ecological sites, the Ridge. The Ridge is part of the northern range of the Arabli Mountains. It's over 1500 million years old and is home to some of Delhi's most important first human civilizations. Simply put, the city of Delhi that we know today may not have actually evolved if it hadn't been for that ecological footprint there. In the midst of a climate crisis, growing inequality and growing populations as well, we explore why studying the history of our environment can teach us more about our future than we realize. I moved to Delhi um, in 2010, and at that time I had no idea that there was something called the Ridge in Delhi that was important to its to its ecology and history. I lived close to um, the north campus of Delhi University, and one of my friends who I, who I met early on told me, "Oh, you should you should check out this park. It's really wild. Like there's all these you know monkeys, and people say it's unsafe, but it's really beautiful. You should go check it out." And I went and I checked it out and it didn't seem quite as, as wild as he said, but it seemed to have quite a hold on, I mean, students at, at Delhi University and sort of people in the area, it sort of had all these stories about it. I mean, including ghost stories, but also in terms of, oh, this is where crimes happen, but also this is where lovers will go. You know, if they don't have space, they'll, they'll go to the forest. So. That was my first, I mean, I almost stumbled upon it. And, you know, there were temples there, but there were also gyms, like outdoor gyms there. So it seemed like this extremely kind of lively, exciting space. And I got to know, okay, this is actually part of what's called the Ridge. Um, and this part that I'm exploring, this park is basically part of the Northern Ridge. There's four parts of the Ridge in Delhi. And this was the smallest part. It's, it's just 80 hectares, this kind of tiny little sliver of land. And the actual whole Ridge is 80 square kilometers. So in a mega city of Delhi to have that much uh, basically forest land or park land is, is, is fairly remarkable. And the, the most sort of the highest end malls in Delhi are on the Ridge. Um, in in um, Basant Kunj. And when people talk about the ridge, I mean, if, if at all people have encountered it, either people living in Delhi or outside, it's usually in this context of it being a forest um, and of being specifically a reserve forest. So it has the highest level of protection that, that um, the Indian government can give. But as I dug into it and as I began researching it, the ridge wasn't just a uh, protected forest. And actually a lot of that was quite new. So a lot of it was only notified as a forest in, in the 1990s. Um, and the name itself, I mean, the English word ridge suggests that it's um, geological, actually. The ridge doesn't suggest anything about trees or forests. It suggests that it's a sort of geological formation. And in fact, um, the Aravali mountain range, which, which um, starts in Gujarat and goes through Rajasthan and Haryana, basically ends in Delhi. And it's that end of the Aravali mountain range that forms the foundation of, of the ridge. So it was these kind of discoveries that had me going sort of further back and further back and further back in Delhi's history and realizing there's a story to be told. And the sort of seed for the book was, OK, what if we tell that history again, but from the perspective of this ridge, from the perspective of this geological and ecological formation that not that many people would, would know about. Well, one of the, I mean, one of the sort of early kind of historical realizations I had, which which maybe for some people in Delhi would, would be obvious, but it's that the earliest cities of Delhi um, were not only built on the ridge, so on, on top of, you know, these hills, uh, but they were also built of the ridge. I mean, they, they were basically doing very, very local quarrying and taking stones from the ridge itself, from the Aravali mountain range, which is mostly made of this stone called quartzite. 
which I mean explains the second half of the book's title, Quartzite City. Right. So this this piece of particular piece of you know metamorphic stone is very good for building. Um, so these these early cities of Delhi. Um, which you also mentioned. So the sort of fortress that Prithviraj Chahan is, is said to have built, and then the Kutub Minar, and then Tuglukabad. So these these early cities of, of Delhi um, were built not only on the ridge, but they were built of the ridge. It was really the Delhi Sultanate cemented this, this image of Delhi as a capital city. It wasn't Prithviraj Chahan's um, capital. It was only with Kutubuddin Aibak and with the Kutub Minar that was the beginning of saying, okay, this is this is an important capital. And again, it's important that it's up on the hilltop. It's up on you know, it's it's on the ridge. Um, and then that that sort of just be that sort of snowballs. So it's the Sultan that says that it's an important capital. Then the Mughals, when they come, they said, well, look at all these hundreds of years of history. And actually, the Mughals eventually move away from the ridge. So you know, Shah Jahanabad, Old Delhi, is along the banks of the Yamuna River and and in very lo like flat land, not not in the hills. But interestingly, when the British decide to change the capital from um, Calcutta to New Delhi and sort of create the city of New Delhi in, in 1911. One is that they keep on sort of building on that history. They say, look, this has been an imperial capital for so long and we're the next, we're sort of, you know, the next highest, higher stage of that. But they also decide to go back to the ridge and specifically to Raisana Hill. Why was Raisana Hill chosen. And it turns out it's many reasons, economic reasons. The land was cheap there. Um, it was also these regions of prestige to be up on the hill, to be kind of this imposing view. And also part of it was they thought, okay, we can sort of at that time, the ridge was quite bare. There weren't trees, there weren't foliage, and they, but they thought, okay, we can, we can start um, making a forest behind what's now Rastrapati Bhavan, what okay. was then the, you know, the vice, vice regal, um, mansion. So behind that, uh, we can build this beautiful forest. Um, so in some sense, the ridge as we think of it now, that sort of trend was started by the British. They were the first in 1913 to, to say that part of the ridge should be a, a reserved forest. So, and one, I mean, one interesting aspect of this is precisely the, precisely the geology. So when the British were, were building um, New Delhi, they actually built a tram line um, that was taking quartzite from Badarpur in within Delhi, but at that time it would have been the sort of far outskirts or the far reaches in a more rural area. Um, and they basically had these huge quarries um, and they would bring the quartzite by, by train or by tram to what is now New Delhi. And basically this, this pattern of of um, of mining of quarrying continued in the post independence period, but you also, as the stone erodes, as it degrades, as it oxidizes, it breaks down into this red sand that actually, at least around Delhi, is known as Badarpur sand, um, and it's basically just like a sort of broken down, disintegrated form of quartzite, and that's actually very useful for modern construction, not just these sort of old forts. It's that sort of sand is useful for concrete. It's for laying the foundations for roads and for all of that. So as Delhi urbanized, as Delhi became this bigger and bigger and bigger city after independence, then that kind of that use of quarrying um, of quartzite um, in its various forms um, was 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 extremely important. 